Hey, I'm Brian Brown Doing, and let's go ahead and look at the sealed pool. So the first thing I notice about the sealed pool is our lands. We have a sunken hollow and a cinder glade. So uh, that's going to make it easy for us to play three colors if we want, assuming that two of the three colors are either blue, black, or green, red. Um, because there's a lot of, uh, it's going to go a long way in helping us play a third color if we want to, which normally I'm not looking to play a third color, but there are times where it's actually beneficial to do so. And then we also have a spawning bed, which is another big one. Uh, I think this card is extremely powerful in this format uh, to the point where I frequently take it uh, second or third pick in drafts. So I think that uh, seeing a spawning bed here, unlike the Cinder Glade and Sunken Hollow, it's going to actually push us to want to play two colors and maybe even colors that can make use of the Eldrazi spawn from the bed. So that's my initial thought from looking at the lands. Uh, if we look at the multicolored spells here, we have Brutal Expulsion, which is extremely powerful, and then Catacomb Sifter, which is extremely powerful. Uh, the issue here is that Sifter is in black-green, which is not a, usually a very good color combination, whereas Brutal Expulsion is in blue-red, which is usually my favorite color combination. And then Resolute Blade Master is a solid card, but not something that's going to push me into red-white. And then if I look here at the colorless cards, we have two Kozilex Channelers, a Bane of Balaged, an Eldrazi Devastator, and a Scour from Existence. I could see a deck that plays all five of these cards. So immediately I'm going to be looking for a deck that takes advantage of being able to go big and play these big Eldrazi. And oftentimes that is blue and red are colors that are good at going big. So right now I'm already seeing like... Brutal Expulsion, Spawning Bed, and these big Eldrazi, and I'm already thinking in my mind, I hope the blue and the red cards are good. Uh, if we look here at green, we see that green has a couple of really powerful cards. It has Plated Crusher and Brood Monitor, uh, but beyond that, it's very weak overall. Green is a color that could help us uh, play three colors because we do have a natural connection. Uh, the issue here is that green is so weak that we would want it to be our third color and not one of our main colors, uh, which makes it less likely that we would ever want to play Natural Connection. So green is an unlikely play in this pool. If we look here at red, we see that red's actually very powerful, uh, potentially even our best color. So we have two premium removal spells in Touch of the Void. We have two premium aggressive creatures in McKinney Slide Runner. We have a lot of Devoid action here. We have a Vile Aggregate, which is... Uh, what Jerry Thompson refers to as a mythic uncommon because it's so powerful, uh, but it's an uncommon, so you're more likely to see it. Uh, so Vile Aggregate's an extremely powerful card. And then we have Kozilek Sentinel and Vestige of Emrakul. So we have a lot of really good, powerful, colorless cards and a lot of good colorless removal. And then we have Turn Against, which is a great combat trick. So really when I look at this red, I'm thinking uh, I want to play some sort of a Devoid strategy with it, either pairing it with black or blue if possible. Uh, if we look at the black here, we see that overall the black has good cards, but is relatively weak. So we have things like Malakir Familiar that's going to make every deck. We have Demon's Grasp, with just a good removal spell. Painful Truce, a good source of card advantage. Uh, you know, things like Myers, Malice is another good source of card advantage. Uh, Wasteland Stranglers are a really powerful card if we can exile some things. So black has some good cards, and but overall is not a color that I'm seeing as being super powerful. Because while we do have a lot of good cards, there's no real strategy to the black cards. They're just good. And if we look over here at blue, uh, we see that there are actually a lot of good blue cards too. And a lot of them fit a strategy, but it's unclear as to whether that strategy is good. So we have uh, two Mist Intruders and a Bentha Infiltrator. So these are going to really encourage us to play some sort of a uh, processor strategy where we use the Mist Intruders and the Infiltrators to exile our opponent's cards, and then we use things like Merc Strider to make use of the exiled cards. Uh, the issue here is that I don't think that this pool really has enough payoff to that strategy. Uh, we have Intruders and Benthix. We have a lot of ways to exile cards, um, but outside of Merc Strider and Wasteland Strangler, there's not a lot of ways to make use of the exiled cards. So I'm not sure that that strategy is that deep in this pool. Uh, another card of note here is Drowner of Hope, which is just in a very extremely powerful rare. So that's really pushing us into blue as well, along with like Tightening Coils, which is good removal, and Two Clutch Occurrence, which is a premium common in blue. So blue is very powerful and has a lot of synergy. It's just a question of whether we can pair that synergy with anything else. And then we look over here at white, and white is a deep color. We have a lot of white cards. And it's also a powerful color. We have Gideon, Ally of Zendikar. Uh, my only fear is that even though we have a lot of white cards and a Gideon, none of the white cards are really pulling me into playing that color. Uh, I really like Sheer Drop a lot, and we have two copies of that card. 
Uh, but other than Sheardrop, Gideon's Reproach, Ghostly Sentinel, and Gideon himself, none of these white cards are very exciting. So even though we have a Gideon, I could easily see us not even playing white in this pool. However, Gideon's so powerful that I'm definitely going to try to make it work. So that's the initial look at these cards. Uh, let's come back and see how I built it. So as you can see, I ended up building a Grixis Devoid deck, which is a little bit greedy, but at the same time, I didn't feel like either blue-red, uh, blue-black, or black-red were powerful enough on their own. And there are some advantages to playing three colors. For one, Painful Truths is more likely to draw us three cards now instead of just two. Uh, and we get access to some powerful cards like Wasteland Strangler out of black, um, things like Brutal Expulsion and Touch of the Void. So... Uh, there's a lot of really powerful cards here, and even though our deck is a little bit greedy, we do have uh, one, we're playing 18 lands. I'm playing Spawning Bed as an 18th land uh, because we have a lot of top end here. Uh, we have Kozilek's Channelers to help us get there, but we do have a lot of top end, so I want to play enough lands to hit those. Uh, but also playing the extra land is going to help fix our mana some. Uh, and then we have a Sunken Hollow too, which is going to help us be able to cast some of these spells. Uh, as for the deck itself, it looks pretty powerful. We have premium removal in Brutal Expulsion and Touch of the Void, uh, along with Tightening Coils for big things. Uh, we have two Clutch Occurrence, which are going to help us uh, provide a big tempo boost, and uh, Awakening a Land is actually going to uh, produce a colorless creature, which does pump our Vile Aggregate, so uh, there's a lot of value there. And uh, we have a, a number of ways to exile cards, none of which are really creatures. Uh, outside of Benthic Infiltrator and Vile Aggregate, uh, we have things like Touch of the Void and Brutal Expulsion, which can help exile cards. And that's going to turn on uh, Merc Strider and Mind Raker and Wasteland Strangler as ways to make use of the exile cards. Uh, so there's a lot of synergy here, and there's a lot of powerful top end. So I feel like this deck is actually very good. Uh, I've put some cards over here because since we're playing three colors, we actually uh, have a lot of options. In terms of cards that we could play, uh, you know, we could sideboard in Boiling Earth, we could sideboard into a more aggressive strategy with McKinney Slide Runners, uh, a more exiling strategy with Mist Intruders, uh, and also Culling Drone if we want to. And then we have things like uh, Royal Mage's Trick, which is good with three colors, is just if our opponent has an aggressive deck, uh, or Myers Malice if our opponent has a control deck, or Scour from Existence. Uh, so there's a lot of options for this deck in terms of sideboarding, which is something that's really important, um, being able to remove your bad cards and bring in good cards. So uh, I really like this deck a lot. Uh, it's not playing Gideon, which is probably the most powerful card in our pool and potentially even the set, but I think this deck is better overall for it. So that is how I built this sealed pool. Uh, maybe not the same way that others would build it, but uh, I really like the way it looks.